Welcome back this is part 2 of. What if Issei and Rias had a powerful child? Alright let's begin. Chapter 2. Sing me a lullaby. After defeating that unstoppable monster, Nyarlathotep a unknown voice revealed itself to me and given me a task in turn I would be able to go back in time where my friends and family alive. A place where I could see their smile and hear their laughing even if they don't know who I am I still wish to just see them again. The voice explained to me that he will send my soul to the past and reconstruct my body, clothes and everything. I didn't hesitation after he had revealed that he was the god of Bible that was supposedly died from the Great War of the Three Faction. As flashing light enveloped my vision gradually return and saw that was I in a small crater likely created as I was being sent back like that one movie about killer robots. As the dusk cleared I took a long and deep breath looking at the moon though it was kind of blurry. A barrier huh? After enjoying my long release of freedom I started taking a step but was greeted with excruciating pain as every part of my body screaming in agony. While grasping my head I tried my best to stay conscious, I don't want to spend my time in an unknown place. My eyes open wide as I recognize the people in front of me. Uncle Kiba, a pretty boy with short blonde hair and blue eyes which could make any woman fall for him. Mother Akino, beautiful young woman with a voluptuous figure, very long black hair and violet eyes. Her hair is tied in a long ponytail, reaching all the way down to her legs with two strands sticking out from the top and sloping backward, with an orange ribbon keeping it in place. Mother Kaneko, petite girl with white hair and gold eyes. The front of her hair has two long bangs going past her shoulders and several loose bangs hanging over her forehead, while the back has a short bob cut. Mother Asia, a pretty young girl with long blonde hair and green eyes. Her hair flows all the way down to her back, with split bangs over her forehead and a single strand sticking out from the top and sloping backward. Mother Zenovia, young woman with chin-length blue hair with a dyed green fringe on the right side and brown eyes. I was glad they were here though their clothes was torn to shreds, I was still happy that they didn't have any serious injury. My gaze met its end as it locked in place to a beautiful young woman with white skin, blue eyes. Her most distinctive feature is her long, beautiful crimson hair, that reaches down to her thighs with a single hair strand sticking out from the top. Her hair also has loose bangs covering her forehead and side bangs framing her face. This was my real mother Rias Gramori. I then switch my gaze to a young man with short spiky brown hair, with two short locks of hair behind his head, and light brown eyes. On his left hand was red crimson gauntlet that a giant green orb on the back. This was my perverted father, Issei Hyodo. I can't help myself be overwhelmed with emotion that I tried my best to approach them but in every step I took, I felt sharp agonizing pain course through my body yet it did not stop me. I push myself further and further. I'm getting closer. I wanted to hug them, to feel their warmth once again. I desperate desire to experience love of a family that was stolen from me. Mother. Don't cry. I thought I saw tears fell from my mother's eyes, it pains me to see her cry like this. Immediately Mother Peerage noticed her tears and tried to comfort her. Ha 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 who is this? Is this your trump card on defeating me, a leader class fallen angel? Tell me what are you planning from summoning this little child, devil king's bitch? I heard deep and menacing voice which made my hair move, turning my gaze I saw and fallen angel with ten wings wearing a dark long sleeve shirt. This trash just called my mother a bitch. I couldn't control myself and release my full killing intent that I master after killing so many monster. I was really pissed, I wanted to rip this trash into pieces for calling my beautiful mother a bitch. What did you just say to her? I shouted angrily, locking my gaze at him and not letting any chances for him to escape. The trash couldn't help but step back as it felt fear. Yes cower in fear you little shit. With a snap of his finger he summoned dozen of light weapon. What is happening? Me, a leader class fallen angel who had fought in the great war of the three faction afraid of this frail child. He screamed as he shot his light energy with incredible speed. Haha ha, since you offered me this then I would gladly take it. I thought as I focused my senses trying to summon my sacred gear. This was extremely painful feeling every single fiber of my body torn to shred. Push through this as a feast that offered by this trash. Sacred gear. I scream and raise my left hand burst with dark energy, sound of metal clanging as my hand began to change. A dark gauntlet appear on my left hands, 
It had four golden orb as if it was an eyes, it was similar to Issei's boosted gear but had more slicker and simple design. Everyone hold their breath as I display my sacred gear. The Great Eclipse Dragon are often called Abandoned Dragon. I don't know much about this sacred gear but I do know that it stole my chance to have a mature looks making me a forever Shota. Damn it, I'm being reminded how often people thought I was a kid. So many occasions people thought I was kid often giving me candy. Number way another sacred gear user. I heard father's mutter as he was so shocked that he couldn't even remember what he just said earlier. Devour. I shouted as I aim my left arm from the incoming attack. As the two collide the light energy that Kokobiel was slowly consumed by the arm of the boy. Everyone hold their breath from every action the child made including Kokobiel, who was stunned. Deadly silent echoed as the boy took a deep breath as if concentrating. Balance breaker. With a booming sound pieces of dark armored started appearing, start from his hand and spread throughout his body. The armor was jet black with red accent that gave a slick look, helmet that had four horns that looked like a crown and allowed his hair to be dragged by swirling energy. Four dragon wings and a fish-like tail that was longer than his body. My body continued to scream at me telling to stop. I don't know how long I'll last but I don't give a damn. This is trash dare tarnish the name of my family. He threatened to kill everyone that I loved. WH what? This is really interesting. I did not expect the family of Grimori had such a trump card. Very well I will play with this little toy and kill the rest of you. Before he could finish his word, a punch with incredible speed hit face launching him far distance. Say that again and I'll rip you to shred. I said as I prepared another attack after launching him but he quickly counter attacked by summoning his light spear. I tried blocking every single light spear. I won't let you harm them. My body is reaching its limits, my eyes becoming more and more blurry yet I couldn't care less this is my moment to show my enemy what they deserve to those who threaten me or my family. After I finally absorb and block his attack, I quickly jump forward and grab his wings. This is for ruining my reunion. Arg. He scream agony as I rip out with excruciating pain he tried his best escape with no avail as he was held in place by the boy's foot. Everyone was both relief and terrified as they saw how gruesome the child attack was except for Akino who was somewhat delighted. Now then you bastard, what were you saying again about my mother? I said, menacingly, my tone was void of emotion it was the eternal abyss that gaze upon those who gaze into it. What? Arg, what are you talking about? Mother. What nonsense are you spouting? Who is your mother? Kokobiel was bewildered by the words of this child. This bastard really annoying, I'm really tired to think and quickly answered. You really do not know. My name is Hiro Hayudu, the son of the Red Dragon of Domination, Issei Hayudu and Rias Hayudu one of the Devil King. I exclaimed with pride, everyone was speechless from the revelation much like they learned the death of God or Issei's harem king dream. What? Everyone said at the same time with disbelief. This will be your finale moment, any last wishes? I said in a monotone voice as started charging up my sacred gear, preparing a magical attack. A step on his body holding in place as he tried to escape. I could see the despair in his eyes, this trash who act almighty began to cower in fear. I gather more and more magical power in the surrounding absorbing the life of the trees. After I had enough I instantly created a giant ball of dark energy as big as a car. Compress. This is really taking a lot of me as I tried compressing the giant ball, little by little the giant ball had become the size of a human nail. Arg. I'm really reaching my limits now as I aim my hand to his head to take the shot. Take this total ECLI. Before I could shoot my attack the barrier that covered the whole place had scattered as a streak light come out of nowhere and punch my face with immense power launching me far away but I managed to stop my movement in front of my family. I looked who attacked me in a person with white plated armor. There were jewels across various locations on the armor. It also had armor on the face so I couldn't see the expression of this person. The eight wings of light growing from the back were giving out a divine glow in the dark night. Albion. I shouted as the person quickly pick up Kokobiel whose mind was broken from my one-sided massacre. I was pleased that I broke his will yet displeased at the fact that this bastard intervened. Everyone eyes wide as I spoke the name of one of the heavenly dragon. Who is that? Why does he pisses me off? Said father as he was confused from the emotion that wasn't his. Partner. That is Albion, the vanishing dragon and the one we fated to fight, 
said Father's sacred gear, D drag is his voice content a tone of anger. How do you know the name of my sacred gear? said a young man's voice as he directed his gaze to me. I didn't answer as I getting really pissed for his interface and I held my hands and aim my attack yet it gradually disappear and vanish complete. Damn it it slipped my mind about his sacred gear. Divide. Whoa what did you do with his attack? said father as he saw that my attack had vanished to thin air. Damn it he divided my power. One of the abilities of my divine dividing. It halves the power of those I touch every 10 seconds. Your power will become my power. I can see that you're just pushing yourself and barely to stay consciousness. Said the person. He was right I was constantly absorbing life from the ground to sustain my consciousness. Tisk you win. Just tell your video game addict boss to better manage of his men. I shouted as everyone gaze was lock at me. That old geezer of fallen angel always causing trouble because his weird hobbies. Ha 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 I'm surprised that you knew a Zazel video game hobby. Who are you anyway? He chuckled and asked for my name. I was really tired. My body is melting every time I try to breath. I just look at him and couldn't give a reply. Not telling I see huh. Will I need to finish my errand? Azazel told me to take this guy and that priest over to him. He instantly teleport to. A priest who was on the ground and carried him with his arm. He then tried to fly up while spreading his wings of light after retrieving the two. Are you ignoring me? Huh, white one. I heard D Drake as he tried getting Albion's attention. As father's gauntlet glow. This is going to be bloody. I'm surprised you were awake, red one. Albion's armor jewel was also glowing white. If this two fight now it would be highly catastrophic but I couldn't do anything as I trying my damn best to stay consciousness. We finally met, but in a situation like this. That's all right. It's our destiny to fight one day. Things like this happen. But white one. I can't feel the hostility from you like before. Red one. Your hostility is incredibly low as well. Looks like both of us have things that interest us more than fighting. That's how it is. We should be having fun by ourselves for a while. It's not bad like this sometimes, right? Let's meet again, Deidre. That would also be fun, huh? See you then, Albion. The conversation was between Red Dragon Emperor and White Dragon Emperor. Both of them gave a farewell, but father stepped up and seemed unsatisfied. Hey, what's the meaning of this? Who are you two and what are you doing? Because the two of you I couldn't show my glory to Prez. Also what we're saying about being my child. I heard father angrily argue. Cut me some slack if not for me you're probably start yelling stupid and perverted stuff. I felt my father murderous gaze behind my back. Oi oi don't look at me like that. The possessor of the white dragon emperor left, giving one last word. You need strength to understand everything. Get stronger. My rival Kuhn, I will fight you one day or else that kid over there will surpass you. He turned into a white light and flew up. Everyone became speechless at the outcome no one had predicted. The magic circle of destruction that Kokobiel spread had already disappeared. Ah. With a thundering roar my body began to collapse, my armor began to shattering and before I reached the ground I was hugged by warm soft arms. I was being held between mother's big round breast while tears was falling from his eyes. D. Don't. I'm. Sorry. I was extremely exhausted from pushing myself, I couldn't say a word without a pulsing pain spread from every each of my body. What the hell brat, I'm supposed to be the one in that big melons not you. Damn it you making me jealous said father please shut up isei and asia quickly heal him said mother as she called for mother asia ah moonlight healing it's been a while people gather and i look at every single faces i saw every people that i wanted to see again this felt like a dream little by little was getting better thanks to mother asia's sacred gear little boy could you tell us who you were and why you just yell that you were rius's child everyone has the same question as akino shit because I was so pissed that slipped my mouth. How the hell should I tell them? Damn I was careless. Well screw it, I. Well um, because. I am her child. I embarrassingly replied, everyone's eyes wide as I utter unbelievable words. How, what, you, who. My father was really stunned from the shock. He never changed huh. Issei come down. This is child is clearly exhausted from fighting Kokobiel said kiba as he went down in his knees and bow in front of mother president i 
Before he could finish what he was trying to say someone hit his head. You did it, Casanova. Hum. So that's a holy demonic sword. It looks badass since the white and black thing is mixed. Issei. I. I watched the display of companionship between father and Kiba. I didn't know what happened but I remember that Uncle Kiba did something that was reckless. Well whatever it is Kiba clearly was. Relieved as big burden was lifted. His. Like me huh. Yudo. I heard my mother Tender's voice as he looked at Uncle Kiba, I couldn't see her face because of his package but I know she had a soft smile. Yudo. I'm glad you returned. Also to reach balance breaker. I am proud. President. I. To everyone in the club. Most of all. I betrayed you who saved my life once, I can't find the words to express my apology. My hand patted his cheek. Damn it I also want my cheek to pat. Mother always pat me when I was young though my body never changed. But you have returned. That is enough. You can't waste the feelings of your comrades. Pristet. I will vow you once more. I, Kiba Yudo, will protect you and my comrades for the rest of my life as the knight of Rias Grimori's group. You foo foo foo. Thank you. But you can't say that in front of Issei's, okay. I'm also jealous here. Kiba felt both our glare with eyes filled with jealousy. I also want to protect president by becoming a knight. But there isn't anyone who can become president's knight other than you. So take responsibility and finish that task. He said it with a shy face. Yeah, I know, Issei. Asia can you hold him for a second? No. My mother gave me to Mother Asia as she began to stand up, I managed to grab her hand and held tight. Don't. Don't leave me. Don't. Go. Stay. Me. I still struggling to talk but still managed to utter words. Hey don't hold president hand just like that. Angrily said father. I look at him with a smug face. Lucky. Bastard, I said as my consciousness given and fainted. Narrative paw. A young boy was sitting beside a tree while he hugged his knees tears was flowing on cheeks. The boys a wore a Victorian clothing clearly for high class noble. He looked at the distance seeing the vast forest that covered large land. Why, why am I curse? My little boy, where are you my child, mother hears so come out. Said a woman with white skin, blue eyes. Her most distinctive feature is her long, beautiful crimson hair that reaches down to her thighs with a single hair strand sticking out from the top. Her hair also has loose bangs covering her forehead and side bangs framing her face. She look around trying to found the young boy that was crying. Don't come near me, I might hurt you mother, said the boy hiding behind the trees. Hero we aren't mad at you, so please come out, I'm a monster I hurt people that precious to me, I. I didn't deserve to live, the boy said as he come out from his hiding. The woman saw the left arms had gauntlet that had four jewel on the back and horn-like protrusion form what looks to be a crown or wings. Because of this thing, why am I cursed to harm people? The boy was cut as the woman hugged him tight not letting go. She began caressing the head of the child and said, Shish, silent, what you did was an accident and you didn't mean to harm us right? I, of course I would never want to harm you but, listen here hero. What you have is not a curse and surely you coming to our life wasn't. It's a blessing, said the woman as she sat and let the boy lay on her lap. She continued to pat the boy's head as he slowly calmed down. You have been gifted with the power to protect those you love and you just have to try hard enough. Your father was able to become that strong because he reminded himself that he needed to protect those he love and dear to him, said the woman as she reminisced the past. Don't lie to me. I know why father is that strong because of his perverted goal. Angrily said the boy, oh my where did you heard that? The woman turned her gaze and curiously look at the boy. Um, from mother Kaneko. Foo 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 well she's not wrong but what I told you was the truth he really gotten strong from wanting to protect us. He was able to do. The impossible. I can't be like father. I don't want to be a perverted old man. Strongly reputed the boy. Ha 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 of course not. What I'm trying to say is for you to grow strong enough to control your sacred gear. Promise me that you'll grow stronger and protect everyone. Uh, I'll try but. No but, shouted the woman as she raised her index finger. Why yes mother, now then shall we go home and relax? If. Dot you don't mind mother why don't we stay like this just little while? Why of course my dear, she replied. The boy's tears stop and began to show a smile. 
Mother would sing me a lullaby. Oh my I'm not really great singer but I'll try. She took a deep breath and started singing lovely melody. Her sweet lullaby made a calming air while she caressed the long white hair of the child. The eyes of the child began to shut and focuses his ears at the lullaby. I promise I'll grow stronger to protect all of you, thought the child as he fell asleep. A moment of peace was broken as the scene change of a place that could only be described as carnage. The boy from before was badly injured as he held his broken arms. His eyes was locked to a person with ten black wings wearing long dark robe that had purple lining and shoulder guard dark purple armor with golden accents. He had short spiky hair that reaches his chin and a dark red pupil with sclera was pitch black. This was a fallen angel and in his clutches was the woman struggling to remove his hand from her neck. Don, don't, you, dare lay a finger on her, shouted the boy as he tried dashing but immediately stopped and clenched his chest. There was hole on his heart. Street, stop, just run hero, said the woman as the man's hand tightened. I'll listen to your mother little boy run. Run as fast as you. Foo 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 ha ha ha, laughed the fallen angel, his hand getting tighter and tighter. S, stop you bastard. The quickly dashes, clenches his fish and boom. With a loud sound the fallen angel took the attack head on. He didn't blink from the attack. The fallen smirk and with a lick of his finger the boy was sent flying in the air. So weak, is this really the child of that foolish red dragon emperor? Fufufuahaha just give up and run or if you want you could watch as I take the life of this bitch. Vane popped from his hand increasing his. H hero. I love. You. Arg. She said one last word as she had fainted from the lack of air. And no. The boy's eyes widened from the he just witnessed. His mother that he ought to protect. His mother who love him. This can't be. Ahaha ah, I love that look on your face. Dom I take a photo or some. He stopped talking, no he stopped moving. He could move an inch only eyes was able to and what he saw was terrifying. Shit, he quickly let go of his hand and tried to escape but in a blink the boy was in front of him. U B A S T A A A A R R R D. He roared so loud that it created an immense wind that destroyed the surrounding rubble. Scene change. The boy gasped for air and opened his eyes with a cold sweat, breathing heavily as he clenched his chest saying that the hole was gone. He quickly look around, what he saw was in well decorated room with a large bed and to side was table on it was lamb that illuminate the room. The door creak and three people came in, two men and one woman and all of them had crimson red. The boy focus his gaze at the this people seeing all of them carry eyes of curiosity. The woman on the other hand looked at the boy with relieved smile seemed satisfied that he had awakened while carrying a tray of delicacies. The boy paused for a moment but quickly tried to move yet was instantly interrupted by the woman. Don't try to move, your injuries haven't been fully healed. The boy checked his body and saw that he was stripped of his clothes in exchange for bandages. He looked like a mummy. While still clenching his chest he tried uttering a word. W what? Happened, mother. Chapter 3. My name is Hiro Hiodo. Quote ellipsis dot dot. Rius let me repeat what you have just said, the boy you have just brought was according to him as your son. Said a man while in disbelief. He wore long robe and each shoulder had a three gray armor with golden lining that arc upward. He had a shoulder length crimson red hair and blue green eyes. He was walking along a corridor that was dimly lit by lamb that hang from the wall, beside him was two other people. One was older looking version himself with a short and red beard and other as voluptuous woman with crimson red hair. Yes brother, I wouldn't believe it if I didn't check his magical power. He has the same demonic magic power as us. A pure breed devil, said a woman with bloodstained crimson red hair that reached her hips. Rias Grimori, dot yet he has a sacred gear. Yes and from what I saw he also able to balance break. Frankly I am still trying my head around it, said Rias while pressing her forehead. Balance break, and you said that this a child, little older than Milika's. He asked while getting more and more disbelief. Yes, you have asked me so many times already, Onisama. Angrily said Rias, hey don't blame your brother for asking since this is something unbelievable. Annoyingly said the man who had a red beard. I apologized, Onisama, father. I'm just getting anxious out of nowhere since that child appeared. She let a sign, remembering that she suddenly burst in tears for unknown reason. Then man with a beard, Zeodicus, Rias' father mood brightened. 
Ha 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 I see it's just further prove that he's your child. W what do you mean father? Your parental instinct kicks in since the child was bedridden for several hours. You even brought food yourself instead of Graphia. Said Zeodicus grinning while pointing at the tray of food, Rius fell into silence. They continue to walk until they arrive in a certain room. Upon entering they saw the boy had awoken in cold sweat while holding his hands on his chest. His gaze turned to them as his discolored eyes widened. He tried to move but immediately stopped by Rius. Don't try move, your injuries haven't fully healed. He slowly walked at the boy with a concerned look. The father and son looked at Rius having the same thought. She's acting like a mother huh? They paused for moments scanning the child with curiosity. The boy began to speak in weak voice. What? Happened? Mother? Said the boy as he looked at Rius. Rius became flustered upon being called. Mother, with such a straight face. First of all we would like to ask you who are you? What is the last thing you remembered? Asked the young man, Sirzex, big brother of Rius. The boy thought a moment and quickly answered. The last thing I remember huh? I arg. He held his head pain as if a bullet pierced his head. He suddenly remembers the slaughter he had experienced, the death he had caused, the screaming that echoed. Everything. Calm down. Shouted Rius as she quickly hugged the boy making the food on her hand fell to floor, he held tight at Rius not wanting to let her go. After a few minutes the boy's scream subsided and slowly let go. The two men narrowed their eyes in pain seeing how the boy reacted, they knew already that he had gone through some difficult hardship. Why you're here? Is this a dream? No. No this is real you're alive. The boy remark made Rius' eyes widen. The boy start tearing as he lowered his head and start muttering. I I'm as sorry I couldn't become strong, enough to save you. The boy gritting his teeth. Shish you saved me, you saved me and my friends from Kokobiel. Even though she doesn't really understand what is he saying, she just gave another hug without hesitation helping him calm. Down. Oh okay I'm alright. I have calmed down mother, thank you. After a few minutes the boy managed to compose himself. Ah. Dot yes no problem. She replied flustered. Is this boy really my child? But his hair white, though it has red streaks yet he said his father was eyes. Did I marry eyes? This was the thought that run wild in Rius' mind. The boy looked at his mother's red face. Mother are you sick? He asked but was answer a sound of coughing. Cough if you're done with your mother and son bonding I want to start asking. Said Sirzex as he turned his gaze at the boy. Uncle Sirzex. Grandfather Zeodicus. Said the boy with confused looked. Quote ellipsis dot. Since you know who we are we will cut to the case. Who are you and why do you call my little sister? Mother said Sirzex in serious tone. M me. Oh crap now I remember. I was sent back in time. Well shit I didn't expect to reveal this early but fuck it, here goes nothing. My name is Hiro Hiodo though my full name is Hiroshin Grimori Hiodo, my mother is Rias Grimori and my father is that pervert beast, Issei Hiodo. The boy, Hiro answered. The two men eyes bulge from shocked and Rias chuckled yet was also shocked on what she heard. You travel through time. Is that even possible? Do you have any proof of what you just said? Don't get the wrong idea but I just wanted to make sure. Asked Sirzex. This was simply unbelievable he knew that stopping time is possible but reversing time. How I proved myself. I'll be honest I don't have any way to you make believe me. Oh I almost forgot about this. I haven't been able to use this for a while. Suddenly a dark red sphere of energy appear on his palm. It was radiating with so much demonic power that even Serzek who had the title of Lucifer flinched from the sight. Power of destruction. This is unbelievable. This proved that you're a Grimori but can you tell us how you were able go back in time? H how travel back? Frankly I don't know before I knew I was there fighting the trash. He frowned while remembering how he mocked his friend and family that misses dearly. Serzek was suspicious since the boy seemed like his hiding something but didn't press further cause he felt that whatever his hiding it's very important. I'll just ask him later when he's ready. Alright, last question how are you able to use a sacred gear despite being a pure breed demon? Ah well the thing is, special I guess. When I was just a child it suddenly manifested out of nowhere and caused destruction. 
My sacred gear is very mysterious even after intensive investigation no one was able to find any traces of its existence even with the help the three great faction. I only know that it can consume anything and able to strengthen me or create a magical attack. Nervously explained Hiro while scratching his head. Well that is kind of vague but it is enough. Thank you for your cooperation, Hiro. Said Sirzex. W wait what do you when you're a child? How old are you boy? Said Zeodicus confused from his statement. The boy doze off for a second and suddenly face palm. Aw fuck. Well please don't be surprised but I'm actually 1070 years old. Because of my sacred gear consuming most of my body, the result is that I don't age and my hair become white though thankfully I still have some crimson red streak. Also please call me hero. Everyone became silent every time he start explaining new things about himself, suddenly it was cut with the sound of growling stomach. Oh sorry about that, I haven't eaten anything in ages and seems that the food mother brought had fell to floor. Well let us continue in a later time. Why don't we all have breakfast today including you hero since you already confirmed that you're a Grimorian has the power of destruction then. You're part of my family, my nephew. Smiled Sirzex as he turned his gaze to Rias who was blushing. That's cute. Oh my I didn't expect to have another grandson after Milikas so early. My baby girl Riri is really grown up into a wonderful mother. Oh Oni-sama. F father aren't you accepting this a little too fast. His body haven't even fully healed yet. Even if he's suspicious he still did save you so I don't mind accepting what he said and treat him as a guest. Furthermore he does look a lot like you and Isei-kun mixed together. And about his injury look at it, haven't you noticed it? Said Sirzex pointing at Hiro who was surround white aura. Senjutsu. W-Y I haven't noticed it. Oh ha ha sorry I gotten used to using Senjutsu for healing myself that I did unconsciously. Jokingly said Hiro while moving his body as if his injury has disappeared. Since you have already recovered why don't we head to the dining hall? I want to introduce you to Venelana. Excitedly said Zeodicus. Ha ha I'll call Grafia to bring you some clothes. Rius why don't you stay here and accompany Hiro until Grafia comes. Said Sirzex as he turned seeing Rius depressed state and Hiro's confused look. Scene change. Issei pa. After the battle with Kokobil we all went home since all of us extremely exhausted while Rius brought the mysterious child to Underworld to heal him. Did that kid say that he was my child? He also said that his mother was Bocho. Did I get laid with Bocho? No 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 that's not possible. Does she even like me? She does tease me from time to time but I highly doubt that she saw me nothing more other than her favorite servant. She too perfect for me. But, arg, this so frustrating. Okay calm down let think other things, yes other things. The vanishing dragon. I don't know how strong he was since he quickly left the scene but he was confident enough to say that the kid would surpass. The kid. Damn here I was trying to think other things I ended up remembering what the kid said. To be fair without the help of that kid we would have been toast. Now that think about it, it's impossible for pure breed demon to have sacred gear right. But why was that kid able to use it and able to balance break? This getting more and more annoyingly complicated. Um, eyes coon can, can I enter? I heard Asia's sweet tender voice. I immediately answer for her to enter and she did. She wore her adorable nightgown. Oh my I will never get used to how adorable Asia look in that outfit, never. Your Oni-san is very proud of your tiny body Asia. What's wrong Asia? Need any help? I said as saw Asia's shaken body. I couldn't blame her since even though she a devil now, she was still a devote follower of God and now finding out that he's dead. It would be much weirder if she didn't react at all. All of sudden Asia jumped at me and held me tight. Oh my god I feel her petite body touch my body. I want to touch her breast so badly but I must not stain the purity of Asia even if it pains me. No I couldn't help it, blood, blood is gushing on my nose. Calm down calm down you already felt this melon so you should get to its soft sensation. Suddenly notice her teary eyes. Dom you Kokobil for making my precious Asia cry. Fuck you, I, I'm sorry, for doing this. Don't worry about it, it's natural for you to be shocked since you're still a devote follower even if you're a devil. I pat her to calm her down but she suddenly turned her teary face to me. My good what an adorable angel though she's a devil bee but that's beside the point. Her expression is so cute that I want to pinch it. 
Suddenly Asia did something that I didn't expect, our lip have collided. I could feel her tongue was swirling around my mouth. WWW what's going on Asia? Oh my god I didn't expect Asia. To make such bold move on me. I could die right now. Goodbye my friends and family I have fulfilled my mission. W wait no get a hold yourself you're staining the purity of your little sister. After few minute of kissing she slowly her lip left mine while a thread of saliva had formed. Oh lord please take my life for I have stained this pure girl. Ah, W what? Why did you do that Asia? Well, I was extremely scared when we were about to lose, dot you. Quietly said Asia as I continued to pat her. Hey don't worry about it. Even without the help of that mysterious kid I could kick that fallen angel ass without a problem. I confidently exclaimed while she chuckled from my childish remarks. But in reality I was afraid, even just imagining gives me shivers. We were easily defeated by Kokobiel without a single sweat. I'm far too weak to protect them. That's why I have to grow stronger, stronger than ever. A servant that serve his master well. Eyes San do you have any idea who was the person who helped us? I have no idea but I do feel that he was familiar as if he was my unknown brother or something. I I wasn't sure but D did you hear him call you, father? Shyly asked Asia, WWW what? Then I didn't misheard it, Asia also heard the boy's statement. M me and Bocho having a son. I'm sure it's not possible since I'm just servant and Rias is my master but perhaps, no it's probably a fluke. I'm just daydreaming it's impossible for me to get together with her. And no am I just denying reality? Is this a dream? No I felt Asia sensation this got to be real. Why yes I did but. I'm not sure what he said was the truth or maybe we just misheard it. I told her what I really know, I was as confused she was. Quote dot dot dot. Eyes San do you like Bocho? Asked Asia. W what is this, a trick question. What the hell is really going on? Yes I do like her very much but she's my master and I can't reach her league she's too far off. But ah, uh, and here I wanted up become a harem king yet can't answer someone feeling. No I shall achieve my marvelous dream without fail. Why yes, I quietly reply while Asia held Titan. Do you like me eyes San? Oh oh my god her gaze is peering to my soul. It's too damn pure. H how the hell should I answer? She can't be in love with me does she? She's my cute little cute sister. This day has really been eventful, first I survive a horrifying monster that almost killed us all but saved by a mysterious kid and now I'm suddenly getting some sort of confession. Damn I don't really know how to answer it but, screw it. Yes I do like you Asia but, I answered but frankly I still doubt myself since I don't know what the girls really feel about and afraid that, no they're different but I couldn't help but doubt them. Hey don't get me wrong I do trust them with all my heart but inside my heart, there's something that still reside echoing in silence, would you die for me, Rainer or Yuma still lingers within my mind. I see, ah thankfully Asia understands since really hard for me to honestly answer their feelings towards. Even if I'm a pervert I still have feelings you know. But my thought was disturbed by Asia's statement. Then since your dream is to have harem I, I don't mind sharing with Bocho. Asia said within her determination. E. W. What are you saying Asia? I do like Asia a lot but I'm not sure if this is really what she feels about since I did save her and took care of her. She probably just doing this repay me, right? Ah this is stressing my mind so much I might pass out. The cute adorable shy Asia is starting to get bold. Did I really stain her with my perverted mind? When will this night ever going to be over? Scene change. Hero pa. After I awoken up, I was immediately met with barrage of questions from Uncle Searzex, the red crimson haired guys that look like the male version of mother. Ah I was careless and didn't even notice what I just blurted out when I fought that trash who was apparently Kokobiel, one of the leader of Fallen Angel faction. I never heard about him, well I did but it was so trivial that I instantly forget about him. Hell I spent a thousand years fighting a giant deformed monster every day don't blame me for forgetting some things. His question was simple enough that I could hide most of my secrets. I couldn't tell him that I was sent here by God a Bible cause my world was destroyed though I feel that he was suspicious of me but didn't press any further. Thank you for that uncle. I'm really happy to be able to return here but it may complicate thing, but fuck it I'll face it head on. 
After Uncle Searzek stopped questioning me he suggested that I should have breakfast with them which I would be delighted to do. Wait how long was I asleep? Um mother how long was I asleep? I looked at my mother who seemed fidgety. Hell I couldn't blame her since some random kid just start calling her mother, wouldn't you react the same way as her if you're in her shoes? Well it might partially my fault cause I couldn't call her by name, I'm just not used to. Why you're been a asleep for the whole night? She nervously replied. Welp this getting awkward huh? I wonder what I could do to make the atmosphere better. Ah. Damn it I couldn't think of anything I know this is my mother but she's not the same as my mother from the future. Is my decision coming here a wrong one? Should I have let myself die in that time? No if I did that I would have made their sacrifices in vain. Yes this is my mother no matter what. Um I'm sorry for making things awkward. I'm just used to calling you my mother since that only thing I call you. I apologized. She's immediately get flustered again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I made things even fucking worse now. Great work dumbass. AI you don't have to apologize it's just I'm having a hard time getting my head around it. You're my child right? Why yes. I'm your second child next to my big sister. Okay let's just try to not make things awkward okay. A moment of silence suddenly enveloped the whole room. Alright this is not the way to make things not awkward. I can't stress it enough I'm such a dumbass. Big sister. You're saying that you're not my only child. Yes. She's looked exactly just like you though with shorter hair and has the same personality as my perverted father. Well let not add that she's both a brotherkin and shotokan. Oh god now remember the time she made cross dress every time she sees me. But well I wouldn't lie that I'm not happy in every question that she asked. I was having a lot of fun just talking to her. I really missed this time when I'm just spending time with my family. Damn it I remember the bitter past. I see. I'm curious did I's able to achieve his dream of becoming a harem king. Oh my god I really don't want to answer this. But if I don't answer it would make things more awkward yet. Ah. Damn it father you're putting in a tight spot. Ah yes he was able to do it. He become a very powerful and influential person in the future. If I'm not forgetting it includes you. Mother Akino, Mother Asia, Mother Zenobia, Mother Irina, Mother Kaneko, Mother Kuroka, Mother Rossweiss and Mother Ophis. That's all I remember since my memory's still fuzzy and I might be wrong. Note to self always tell father his one lucky bastard. I saw my mother's jaw drop. Oh oh Ophis. The Ouroboros dragon. You mean the infinite dragon. Yes the one and only she was part of father harem. Or maybe not. Like I said my memory is kinda fuzzy and I might be wrong. I see. Well I'm glad he was able to. Achieve his dream. I heard whisper quietly. This is making embarrassing seeing my mother suddenly become jealous. Hey 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 please don't make such troubled face in front your son this is making me want to bury myself in a hole. Thankfully out of nowhere Grafia entered the room while carrying a set of clothing along with my olds ones. Grafia you're a lifesaver here you know. I don't know how my heart could take seeing my mother jealously. Ojo-sama, your parents are waiting for you in the dining hall. Hiro-sama I have prepared the clothing that Sirzex requested. Said Grafia while bowing in front of us. Well that's a honorific that I haven't heard in a while. Alright thank you. Mother you should go first I'll get ready and follow you in the dining hall. I already know where it is. I said as I looked at mother who seemed to have composed herself. I see alright Grafia. Um hero I'll see you in dining hall then. She said to me as she slowly toward the door and disappear. Only Grafia remain in my room for unknown reason. That will be all Grafia I can get myself dress. I said as I started to get out of bed. Oh god my body is so numb, I have to exercise my body first before heading out. Grafia looked at me with curiosity. You're welcome hero sama, then I will take my leave. She said as she gave a small bow. Hum usually she bow me for a few seconds but now it's pretty quick. It's probably because she don't really know me. As I approached she left the clothing on the table in front the bed. Wait Grafia, can I ask you something? What would that be Hiro Sama? She asked me in a confused face. Geez I was just want to ask if I could get some glasses, I don't need it but I do like using one. Can I get a pair of glasses? A pair of glasses, I'll see if I could prepare one, Hiro Sama. She said as she left the room leaving me alone with the clothing she brought. It was highly elegant noble clothing that most high class devil wear. 
The color of the clothing was mostly black with red accents and a pair of jet black pant. If I guess this is one that Milika's used. Well I didn't expect to wear fancy clothing again. I slowly removed the bandages that wrapped around my body as I did, my rip of body gradually became visible. I had many scars that caused with a long fight in war. Well this is high contrast with my childlike looks and height. Step by step I wore the clothing, I looked at the mirror beside and saw my face. My discolored eyes shine like a pearl of jewel as the sun reflect upon it, white long messy hair with red streak that reaches my waist. Damn am ain't I handsome. I can't emphasize enough I how many things I couldn't do while killing that bastard. I checked my old clothing trying to find my necklace and thankfully I was able to find it. I quickly wear it since it was a gift from Uncle Sirzex when I fought small scale war. Then I noticed that the cross earring was still on my ears. Oh shoot I didn't notice it but I'm glad mother wasn't hurt by it. Alright since I'm done checking myself, I should try doing some light exercise. First, was stretching my hole which includes putting my legs the wall I spread my legs. It was like that Korean comic book about Monkey King high school boy. After that I close my eyes and took a deep breath. My body moved like leaf that flow with the wind, my punks and kicks gave sound of a whip yet still retain flexibility. It was like dance but in truth I was doing my martial arts style that I use when fighting without my sacred gear. I suddenly jumped and bounced around the room with high speed but with years of training I didn't made any single sound. That what I thought but I could feel my control was a bit unstable than I usually used to. Well this is troublesome. It seemed that after, traveling through I actually lost some of my magical power and physical power. If you compare my current self from my past self then I am like cup of water and past self is the whole ocean. It was really big difference like the heaven and earth. Shit I have to train my body again bummer but oh well is better to grow to protect someone than nothing. My light exercise was finally over and I was ready to meet my family. Thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed see you next time okay bye.